Hollywood, it's time to chill out with the kissing. I get that there's nothing more fun than sticking your tongue right in someone's mouth and tasting their gums and squeezing their bum and wiggling your face all about, but you need to understand that it's not always appropriate. Let's give an example. A good place for kissing is on a date, in the bedroom during a boring movie, or just to celebrate the magic of being alive. A bad time to kiss is when you're smack dab in the middle of a big group of innocent people dying horribly because of your own mistake. Which works as a great segue into... In case you're one of the five people who didn't go see Jurassic World this summer, Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard are currently tangling tonsils right at the heart of an attack of terrifying pteranodons. Hundreds of people are dying around them horribly, and I feel that this can't be stressed enough. Every single one of those deaths is directly their fault. You think it because it was their monumental incompetence that allowed the Indominus Rex to escape. And once the Indominus Rex escaped, it immediately broke into Carnivore Aviary and commanded them to launch a bloody assault. And these murder birds set about their job like they're a bunch of Boy Scouts trying to earn whatever merit badge allows them to quit the Boy Scouts. My point is, I wish that Bryce Dallas Howard had just gone on OK Cupid or something. If people need to have died for your relationship to work, then you're not justified. You're just kind of a jerk. Did that rhyme? I'm sorry, that was weird. Anyway, speaking of grotesquely inappropriate displays of affection. Now, you might see Cusack and Amanda Pete Mack and think things are on track and get behind that. <clears throat> because their prob's gonna die and are just desperate for one last fleeting moment of warm intimacy before the icy black waters crush their bodies against the metal grating like grapes through a cheese grater. But you're forgetting one thing. Cusack is Pete's ex-husband and she was happily remarried less than 24 hours ago. Love you, honey. This is a weird situation for me to be on board with, especially since there are so many other people still alive. So you don't need to start f***ing right away out of some misplaced sense of responsibility, which is the only reason anyone has ever agreed to f*** old John Cusack. This woman's grieving her husband, her father, and most of the earth. And as a med student, she has a lot more to offer than just giving birth. <laughs> I want to focus on one thing here. The timer on that nuclear bomb says 156. That's just under two minutes to save the lives of everyone in the city. And for 11 of those seconds, Bruce has the gall or perhaps lacks the acumen to delay his withdrawal by bat-tonguing Catwoman. <clears throat> <clears throat> he almost incinerates the entire city of Gotham. We're supposed to forgive him because his gadgets are really cool. This guy's no hero. It's like we said all along. He just likes S&M. He fights for his dong. <laughs> Can I have some water? I have like a rhymey taste in my mouth. <clears throat> <clears throat> Jason takes Manhattan, set mostly on a boat, which is a metaphor for how this franchise can't stay afloat. This is a situation where context actually makes it worse because just a few seconds ago, this woman was almost forcibly injected with heroin and then sexually assaulted in an alley. The Friday the 13th franchise isn't known for its nuanced exploration of human emotion or portrayals of grief and tragedy, but if any guys took tips from picking up girls in this movie, let me just say right now, I am probably too late to help you because Friday the 13th part eight, Jason Takes Manhattan came out 26 years ago and you've all grown up and raised the kind of kids who hang out on men's rights subreddits. But in case there's some time machine action going on here, take this pro tip from a master of tongue whacking. When a woman opens up about a tragic sudden death of her parents, that is not your in. I was at school and they told me, Rennie, your parents died in a car accident. Nobody is turned on by the deaths of their own family members, aside from perhaps Lois Lane. What, am I out of line? Did we establish anywhere that Lois's family doesn't live in Metropolis? Because if they do, they're totally dead. Even if they live in Teenyville or some other bull DC Universe Town? What about her friends? Lois and Superman are literally surrounded by dead bodies right now. This may as well be the Mrs. Bathory scene from Hostel 2 because Lois is clearly getting off on all this carnage. <laughs> While those piles of bricks hide grisly death spasms, Superman's lips give her mini orgasms. My broader insight is that it's a safe bet that Slaughter and Tights gets Lois all- <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching our video about the most inappropriate kisses ever. Please like and subscribe and all the other things I normally say. Point out in the comments what horrible kisses we missed or why we're wrong for pointing out that these kisses are terrible because they're actually super romantic or just whatever, just say whatever. Say whatever pops into your head.